हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डायनामिक शेड्यूलिंग डायनामिक शेड्यूलिंग सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस डिस्कस अबाउट स्टैटिक शेड्यूलिंग एंड लूप एंड रोलिंग एंड अदर स्टैटिकली दैट मींस कंपाइलर साइट कंपाइलेशन टेक्निक दैट कैन बी यूज्ड फॉर इंप्रूविंग द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ इंसेशन लेवल पैरलिसम so all the previous uh, mechanisms like loop unrolling scheduling uh, prediction uh, etc all these are actually done as part of uh, static or dynamic i mean uh, the uh, compilation time itself we are making some modification on the uh, set of instructions available for uh, execution in the system so now we are considering a different situation that is the opposite of the previous thing that is uh, called as dynamic scheduling now what is happening with the dynamic scheduling uh, we will be having a comparison with the static uh, scheduling in the case of static scheduling we are having the changes applied to the software or the set of instructions that are available uh, within the system we are applying some software technology within the uh, set of instruction but in the case of dynamic scheduling uh, here comes the involvement of the hardware so here what is happening is the hardware rearranges the instruction uh, to reduce the stalls so we always tries to reduce the stalls available because Uh, due to the pipeline execution there will be some situation where some hazards may occur maybe some data dependence may occur maybe some other situation where we need to forcefully stall the execution of some stages within the uh, pipeline architecture so uh, statically we are doing some uh, additional enhancement so that we can uh, increase the instruction level parallelism but what is happening in this dynamic scheduling is uh, in the run time the hardware will rearrange the instructions automatically so that we can reduce the number of stalls uh, that may be created uh, due to the execution of the different number of instructions that are executed in the pipeline fashion so Uh, reduce the stalls while maintaining data flow and exception behavior so uh, the data flow must be maintained properly and also if there are some exception behavior in between in between and that cannot be avoided it must also be executed in that way itself so now just look at what are the advantages of uh, using this dynamic scheduling first point is it allows code that was compiled with one pipeline in mind so one pipeline that was compiled that is uh, we, are, we are having one particular order that is the static order that is already available so in mind we are having one particular order but the same pipeline will be executed uh, efficiently on a different pipeline during the run time so Uh, for example if these are the set of instruction that are executed 1 2 3 maybe during run time it may be executed like 1 3 2 it may be executed like 3 uh, uh, will be moving into the second position and 2 will be moving towards the third location so whatever uh, instruction order that is available during the compilation time may be varied uh, into a different pipeline order during the run time so it allows the code that was compiled in uh, one particular order that is in mind that was the initial stage that was actually given but that will be running in a proper uh, or efficient way by using a different pipeline order now the second advantage is it enables handling some cases uh, when dependencies are unknown at compile time so compile time what we are actually aware about the number of the set of instructions what are the operations to be done and uh, sometimes we don't know whether some data produced by this stage is uh, actually dependent 
or it is uh, required for the next insertion we don't know that means this insertion is depending on the data of this particular insertion so some dependencies are unknown at the compiler time during the normal uh, flow that means normal order we don't know the dependencies so uh, we can utilize or we can find out those dependencies during runtime or dynamically and we can handle handle these cases by using dynamic scheduling now third case is it allows the processor to tolerate unpredictable delays such as cache misses so some of the delays like uh, they are unpredictable that may happen during runtime only during the final execution only that time sometimes when uh, it it expects some data from the cache it is not available so that situation automatically the hardware will rearrange the execution the instructions uh, by executing other code so, so if one is missing the cache uh, it will automatically uh, move the control to some other code so that some other instruction will be executing uh, while waiting for the miss to result that means one that misses the cache will be waiting and some other instruction will be executed in the uh, uh, pipeline that means a normal flow of pipeline will be reordered with the support of hardware that is called as dynamic scheduling so many of the situations we need to go for this dynamic scheduling so that we can rearrange the instructions and uh, we can perform uh, the we can give a better performance to the uh, insertion level parallelism if it is executed uh, with the support of dynamic scheduling now the ideas behind this dynamic scheduling in normal pipelining it uses in order insertion issue and execution in order so that means whatever order it is given in the same order the set of insertions will be executed in normal pipelining that we were discussing in our previous sessions that means insertions are issued in the program order and if an insertion is stalled in the pipeline no later insertions can be processed so uh, this is one insertion this is second insertion and now if some delay happens to the second insertion all other insertions will be under waiting no other can actually start so this will be stalled accordingly this will also be stalled and accordingly the next insertion will also be stalled some time delay will be happening consecutively for the remaining insertions so, so that happens with the normal simple pipelining so for example if insertion j depends on a long running insertion i so i j now this is i and j and j depends on i the result of i is actually required for j that means j depends on i then all insertions so i is a no, long running uh, task so it is already given it is a long running insertion i but j depends on i some results of i is required for j now what will happen then all the insertions after j even after that k l m number of insertions are there if j is waiting for getting the result of i all the next insertions j k l m all the insertions will also be stalled until i is finished give the data to j and j execute then continue with k l m that is the problem with the normal simple pipeline okay so we are uh, getting the idea of what is the requirement of having uh, or using the concept of dynamic scheduling so uh, uh, we have given one example one example set of code is given there is a division operation f2 divided by f4 result is stored in f0 then we can have an add operation f0 is added with f8 and the result is stored in f8 now you can see here uh, here f0 is there any relation between these two you can clearly see that the second operation rd is taking the 
value of F0 that is the result produced by the first operation div D. Now if div D is delayed, RD will get the input later. That means RD will also be delayed. That means RD is data dependent. This data is required for the operation RD. Okay, so this is a situation when we need to have some delay uh, within the pipeline stages. Now we are having a third operation sub D that uh, actually uh, uh, creates a result F12 based on F8 and F14. F8 and F14. So F8 is a value uh, which is not being taken from some other instruction. F14 is also these two are independent. So uh, what we can do is we can uh, during dynamic scheduling the order will be changed. So now this instruction is depending on the first instruction. So if uh, without the completion of this instruction, this cannot be performed. So in the meantime, an independent operation sub D can take the second position and RD can be moved to the third position. That is actually done with the support of hardware. The hardware will rearrange the order of instruction according to the situation. If there is no dependency, the instructions can be exchanged. If one is not affecting other instruction, they can be exchanged. But if one is depending on some other instruction, it need to wait. It cannot be executed until that required data is available uh, from the previous instruction. So this is the core idea behind the dynamic scheduling mechanism. So uh, explanation is given once again, the sub D instruction cannot execute because the dependence of RD on DVD causes the pipeline to start that I have already mentioned. Sub D is not data dependent on anything in the pipeline that is also given. So this hazard creates a performance limitation that can be eliminated by not requiring instructions to execute in program order. So uh, now we cannot allow the program to execute in uh, the given order. So uh, in the classic five-stage pipeline architecture, both structural and data hazards could be checked during instruction decode. call. So uh, the hazard, uh, like uh, if there is any functional unit that is missing or if there is any data missing, everything will be identified during the instruction decode call session. So this is to be uh, given here. This is given here because you should understand uh, uh, the limitations. That means what happens or when we need to go for uh, changing the order of execution. So whether we need to go for changing uh, order. So how the hardware will identify which instruction or what is to be done next that is based on the instruction decode stage. In the instruction decode stage, if there is any structural hazard or data hazard, it can easily identify it. And when an instruction could execute without hazard, it was issued from instruction decode knowing that all data hazards had been sold. So if it is given, if the instruction uh, could execute without hazard means uh, the instruction decode uh, must be issued. It was issued from the instruction decode for the further execution. So instruction decode portion. So in the classic five stage pipeline architecture, instruction fetch, instruction decode. Instruction decode plays a crucial portion for the dynamic scheduling because here comes the uh, identification of uh, whether there is any structural hazard or whether there is any data hazard. Accordingly, the system need to dynamic, dynamically do the scheduling. Now, we want an instruction to begin execution as soon as its data operands are available. That is very clear. So whenever we want to have an execution of an instruction, uh, we need to have its data available. So that is very clear. So such a pipeline does out of order execution. If it is not available, if the data is not available, uh, 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 it is to be executed out of order. Out of order. So. Uh, if the data is not available, operands are not available, uh, 
uh, we need to have an out of order execution in the previous example itself if the order is being changed uh, that is called as out of order execution which implies automatically out of order completion also so the completion will also be in a different order uh, than what we were expecting so the out of order execution introduces the possibility of several types of hazards like uh, right after read hazard and uh, right after write hazard so these are only two type similarly we are having several other hazards available that depends on the um, insertion uh, that is insertions available within the pipeline maybe sometimes some write will be given after read there will be some writes that are given after write so if it is the actual order it must be maintained but due to the exchange of this order uh, changing of this order uh, sometimes of hazards may happen during the dynamic scheduling process so now let us consider one more example here you can see four instructions it is taken from MIPS uh, FP code sequence a division operation F0 F2 divided by F4 we are having the result F0 then we are having an add operation which takes F0 again, will be added with F8 and the result is stored in F6. Then we are having a, sub, a subtract operation where uh, F10 minus F14 and the result is stored in F8. Then we are having a multiplication operation where F10 is multiplied with F8 and the result is stored in F6. Here we can see that these two are data dependent because rd require the data from div d so rd need to wait until the result of div d being produced so this is data dependent okay so you will see some more examples so there is an anti dependence between rd and sub d so between rd and sub d there is an anti dependence what is that f6 f0 f8 okay f8 f10 f14 so here you can see that f8 is some value is taken f8 some value that is already there that is taken as the input for addition operation but the next insertion actually produces a new value for f8 if the order is moved to this location what is happening is what will happen now uh, the sub subtract operation will produce an f8 and that F8 will be taken as the input for this addition operation. But actually it expects the F8 value uh, before doing the subtract operation. But if you rearrange this order, the value may create problem. That is called as anti-dependence. Now if the pipeline executes the sub D before the RD, it will violate the anti-dependence yielding a right after read that's what i was saying a right after read a right after read so in this situation so it should have this right after read only but if it is being modified it will be changed into some other order that means uh, a read will happen after uh, this write on sub d not the proper right this f8 is the previous right somewhere some other value it was expecting but now this will take uh, if the order is being changed, it will take a new value that is created by sub D that is not actually expected for F8 in this RD operation. This is called as write after read hazard. Similarly, for the same example, we are having uh, 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 some more hazards like to avoid violating output dependencies such as a write of F6 by multi. Right after right hazards must be handled. So F6 by multi. F6 by multi. So this F6, this F6. RD produces F6 by adding F0 and F8. Multi also produces F6 by multiplying F10 into F8. Now, if the order is being changed, finally we will be getting the value F6 is a register. Uh, we don't know whether it is the result of multiplication or whether it is the result of addition. So, there will be some confusion. Right after right. So, finally, 
we don't know whether multiplication happens last or addition happens last so there will be a confusion we will be getting a wrong value for the f6 that is called as right after right hazard but these hazards are avoided by using register renaming so one solution for this situation is to rename the so because entirely two different operations add is done by f0 plus f8 f6 we are using one register for multiplication f10 plus f8 we are using f6 so two different operations we are using the same register this can be resolved by using a different name for this register maybe like f7 for example give a different name for this register so that we can resolve that particular right after right hazard now out of order completion also creates major complications in handling exceptions also if the order is being violated if the order is being violated it may also create complication on handling the exception uh, normally when we do this dynamic scheduling when we reorder this uh, execution uh, statements it must preserve exception behavior also if there was some exception in between the set of instructions these exceptions must be preserved it must be in the same way as it is given in the set of insertion now this preservation is done by ensuring that no insertion can generate an exception until the processor knows that the insertion raising the exception will be executed so uh, uh, if one uh, exception was expected within the given set of insertion uh, no other can no other insertion can gener generate an insertion until this is being executed so suppose this statement was expected to raise an exception let this happen then only some other insertion can allow to uh, uh, raise its own exception so it must preserve the exception that was already expected uh, during the execution of uh, a sequence of insertions now some exception behavior must be preserved similarly dynamically scheduled process could generate imprecise exceptions also it should also uh, generate uh, means uh, uh, it is also having a possibility of having uh, imprecise exceptions so previously we are mentioning about precise exception that happens uh, uh, with a normal expected exceptions within the set of instructions but some uh, exceptions that may happen which is called as imprecise so an exception is imprecise if the processor state when an exception is raised does not look exactly as it is uh, as if the instructions are executed sequentially in strict program order so uh, this is the order that is given and if this is the order it was expected to have some exception that is to be raised here but if it is being rearranged if it is being rearranged now this is the insertion this insertion moved to second location but it is not uh, executing as it was expected when the order was changed that is called as imprecise exception that cannot be permitted okay if the program order is being changed dynamically then also if one insertion produces an insertion i mean an exception it must be precise itself it should not produce an imprecise exception there are two possibilities for uh, this imprecise exceptions one is the pipeline may have already completed insertions that are later in program order than the insertion causing the exception so when when rearranges the order uh, some pipeline may have already completed instructions that are later in program order similarly uh, the pipeline may have not yet completed instructions that are earlier in program so uh, something to be finished later might have already completed maybe one situation uh, uh, sometimes uh, some uh, instructions to be executed earlier uh, means uh, that are not yet completed so uh, uh, both situation there may be uh, the chances of having imprecise if the order is so very simply if you say if the order is being changed 
some in exceptions that was executed earlier or some exceptions that was delayed for after some time so both both the situation uh, there may be some misbehavior of the exceptions that is called as imprecise exceptions that cannot be permitted to avoid uh, out of order execution we actually going to have a solution that is as we have mentioned the decision will be made in the insertion decode stage so that is the reason why we are doing some additional enhancement on the insertion decode stage now for the entire five stage pipeline architecture that is insertion fetch insertion decode execute memory write back the insertion decode stage is further divided into two more stages one is the issue stage and second one is read operands stage the insertion decode is divided into two different stages the same stage is divided into two different sub stages one is called as the issue stage and second one is called as read operands stage now what is happening with issue stage it decode insertions as well as it will check for structural hazards in the first phase that is issue then after that it will read the operands if uh, insertions are okay and if there is no hazards it will start reading operands if there is no data hazards it will start reading operands so insertion decode is actually uh, divided into two different stages insertion issue and read operands stage the insertion fetch stage precedes the issue stage and may fetch either into an insertion register or into an insertion queue so insertion fetch is the first stage then only we are having the issue stage then we are having read operand now in the case of insertion fetch uh, it will fetch the insertion into an insertion register or into an insertion queue then uh, it is given to the Uh, issue then insertions are issued from the register or the queue insertions are issued from the register or queue then the execution stage follows the read operand stage so after getting the read uh, uh, or reading all the operands it will go for the execution stage and execution may take multiple cycles depending on the operation so the entire five stage architecture is divided into insertion fetch insertion fetch this will happen then insertion decode there will be issue then there will be read operands then there will be execution then there will be memory and write back operations this is the way how we are uh, making a change on the normal five stage uh, pipeline architecture we are adding Uh, two more stages that is the sub parts of insertion decode stage issue as well as read operands stage now we distinguish when an insertion begins execution and it completes execution and we are having an execution stage so begin execution complete execution and under execution this is the distinguish between uh, the different stages of execution execution can be further divided into begins execution completes execution and execution stages now our pipeline allows multiple insertion to be executed at the same time that is by using multi cycle operations we can have multiple functional units or we can have pipeline functional units that we have already Uh, explained in the previous session the usage of pipeline to functional units and multi cycle operations and in the dynamically scheduled pipeline all insertions pass through the issue stage in order so here we need to give some uh, focus that is uh, in the dynamic scheduling in the issue stage all the insertions are given in order all the insertions will be in the order in the issue stage so insertion fetch it is in order insertion 
issue it is in order but then it is having some changes that is the dynamic change happens after the issue stage only now they can be stalled after the issue stage they can be stalled or bypass each other in the second stage that is during the read operands so sometimes it can be stalled or it can be bypassed bypass means the order can be changed then automatically the execution goes to out of order fashion okay so sometimes the insertion the insertion may be stalled the stages may be stalled or it may be bypassed means it will uh, it will rearrange the order of insertion and some other insertion will be bypassing the previous insertion and it will continue its execution that means it will go for out of order execution now we are having uh, a mechanism that is called as scoreboarding that allows insertions to execute out of order when there are sufficient resources and no data dependencies so score scoreboarding means allowing insertions to execute out, out of order so out of order is permitted the order can be rearranged when there are sufficient resources available and enough uh, all the resources are available and and if there is no data dependencies that means there is no relationship between different all are independent insertions then uh, it can easily allow insertions to execute out of order if all the resources are available and all the insertions are independent uh, then it can allow out of order and that is called as scoreboarding so whenever we are having such insertions available they can directly uh, rearrange the order and go for execution because it is not affecting any other part of the set of insertions available within the system which is called as score boarding now we will see one particular mechanism that is called as tomasulo's approach uh, that is used for uh, dynamic scheduling which is one of the major approaches used for this uh, scheduling uh, in the dynamic fashion and this scheme was invented by uh, robert tomasulo it tracks when operands for insertions are available uh, to minimize raw hazards and introduces register renaming to minimize right after right and right after read hazards so for minimizing raw hazards it uh, uses uh, 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 the approach and also uh, it uses register renaming in the case of uh, special hazards like uh, waw hazard and war hazards so tomasulo approach can also support overlapped execution of multiple iterations of a loop so if you are having multiple iterations present in a particular loop we can have overlapping between these iterations also that can also be applied in the case of or if you are using a dynamic scheduling mechanism based on tomasulo's approach Now, raw hazards, read after write hazards are avoided by executing an insertion only when its operands are available. Read after write. So, only when its operands are available, uh, then only it will allow its execution. Means automatically there won't be any read after write uh, hazards available. Uh, that is what is happening with the scoreboarding mechanism. Now, uh, uh, write after read and write after write hazards can be uh, handled by using register renaming. That was also mentioned in the previous case. If two results are written into the same uh, register, for example, R sits, uh, we can give so both results goes to R sits. Two different results comes to same register R sits. One can be renamed with some other uh, name. Means we need to use some additional registers for maintaining all these. Um, uh, different registers uh, used for storing the intermediate result. Then tracer renaming eliminates these hazards by renaming all destination registers, including those with a pending read or write for an earlier insertion. 
so the out of order write does not affect any instruction that depend on an earlier value of an operand I will see one one more example to explain the dynamic scheduling using Tomasulo approach. We are having a divide operation f f two by f four f zero r d. So this f zero, these two are data dependent. Then a store f six. So they are also dependent because the result of addition is stored into memory. Then sub d f eight. So here we are having an anti-dependence. Then multiply multiplication uh, f six. So here we are having f six two writes of different operations here also. Okay, so several dependencies are there. So there is an anti-dependence between R D and sub D. R D and sub D. So this f eight and this f eight. There is an output dependence between R D and mal D. R D and mal D F six F six. Okay, output dependence means both outputs are stored into the same register file. Now. Because of this, we can have two types of hazards: WAR hazard and WAW hazard. Because of uh, the add operation, uh, the F8 usage of F8 by add, and uh, um, because of the uh, order of RD and MALD, uh, both writes after write. So these two hazards may happen. In our previous example, also there are some data dependencies. I have already mentioned between div d and r d, sub d and mal d, r d and store d. That was already mentioned in the previous example instructions. Now, these three name dependencies can also be eliminated by using register renaming. As I have already mentioned, we can do some renaming on the register so that. We can avoid name dependencies because all the results are stored into the same register names. So just change the name of the register. So we require more registers for storing these intermediate results. We can assume the existence of two temporary registers S and T, and by using S and T, we are just rearranging the same set of operations. Then div D. Produces F zero R D so data dependence cannot be avoided here, but the result is stored in register S, and this register S value is stored into the memory address. Then sub D produces the result and stores it into the register T, and multi multi takes the result T and will be multiplied with ten, and the result is stored in F six. So some clashes are being avoided by renaming the register with a different register file okay so that the name dependence can be so here the result is written into s but here the result is written into f6 so there there is no conflict so by doing register renaming we can avoid name dependences the renaming process can be done by the compiler so renaming is actually done by the support of compiler And in the Tomasulo scheme, register renaming is provided by reservation stations. So this is one of the major term used with Tomasulo's approach. Uh, the register renaming by using Tomasulo approach, the register renaming can be automatically done with the support of uh, reservation stations. We will see reservation stations and. we will see what are the contents of reservation stations and how it will work later now the major contents of reservation stations are that is uh, it buffers the operands of instructions waiting to issue it will store all the operands all the required operands input data uh, uh, that is required for the uh, remaining set of instructions that are stored inside the Reservation stations. 
and it also fetches and buffers an operand as soon as it is available so whenever these operands are available uh, uh, it will fetch the instruction I mean the reservation station fetches and buffers an operand as soon as it is available so it will be storing inside the so you'll see one diagram later it will store the uh, operands into the reservation station eliminating the need to get the operand from a register so automatically whenever this data are available it will be uh, fetched into the reservation station that means we, we don't need to always look at the register every time we can uh, get the data from the reservation station which is closely uh, placed uh, nearer to the uh, functional units when successive writes to a register overlap in execution only the uh, last one is actually used to update the register so uh, we, we can use a reservation station for intermediate result storage and utilization and only the last one that is actually required uh, will be uh, updated in the register so register is the major part but intermediate uh, temporary results and for further uh, uh, operant uh, and related operations uh, the functional units uh, will collect the data from the reservation uh, unit and finally uh, the values are updated in the register file also since there can be more reservation stations than real registers the technique can even eliminate hazards arising from name dependencies that could not be eliminated by a compiler so we can use more number of reservation stations than the number of registers available so that we can avoid many such uh, name dependencies and other problems related to the uh, execution of uh, out of order executions now the use of reservation stations i have already mentioned it is mainly used for uh, storing the operands that are required for the different functional units uh, uh, available within a system so it is actually a replacement for the centralized register file uh, so we don't need to always refer to the register file whenever we require some operand we can directly go to the reservation station so whenever whichever um, uh, functional unit requires some operand it will directly look into the reservation stations hazard detection and execution control are distributed now uh, when we use reservation stations the hazard detection and execution control are distributed then the results are passed directly to functional units from the reservation stations so results are passed directly to functional units from the reservation so intermediate results are directly taken from the reservation unit and it is given to the functional units rather than going through the registers so register file is not always being referred and this bypassing is done with a com uh, common uh, result bus that allows all units uh, waiting an operand to be loaded simultaneously which is usually called as common data bus cdb all this bypassing is done that means the reference between the operands operands move to the functional unit and the result is again going back to the functional unit i mean going back to the um, reservation station is actually done with the support of a common data bus we'll see the diagram within the diagram we can uh, clearly understand the working of tomasulo's approach so this is the uh, processor uh, that is created based on tomasulo approach okay so from this diagram we can see that this is the insertion unit or insertion queue where the insertions are waiting the different insertions are waiting so now some insertions are load or store operations it will take this address unit it will calculate the effective address then there will be load bus buffers for all the load related uh, data are stored in the load buffer then uh, these are the store buffers the store whatever data that is to be stored into memory are uh, placed in this buffer 
then loaded data are stored in this buffer and we are having a memory unit for doing all these operations so address unit is for calculating effective address memory unit is for uh, taking the value from the uh, taking the data from memory or uh, getting the data from the memory so from this memory so after load or store uh, this data is actually connected to the common database so this is the common database which is actually which is actually connected to uh, several locations first thing is it is directly connected to the floating point register it is connected to the register but every time we are not storing the result into the register only the final value is stored into the register okay so uh, now memory unit from the memory uh, store then load from memory store to memory this will happen between memory unit and store and load buffers with the support of address unit and any result from the memory will be uh, connected to the common database so that it can be available to the register or it can also be available to the reservation station so this is one reservation station and this is another reservation stations and these reservation stations are connected closer to the functional unit like fp adder or fp multiplier so what is fp adder floating point addition all the operations are done with fp adders and in this reservation stations the details of operands required for floating point additions are stored so the inputs are taken from the reservation stations for fp addition operations similarly for fp multiplication operations all the operands are stored in the reservation station so some data that is taken from the memory will be passing through common database and it will be stored into the reservation station of fp adder or the reservation station of the fp multiplier and if that is being done if that data to be added from reservation station the data will be taken so every time if fp adder wants some data from the uh, some data to be processed it will take it will just look into the reservation station whether the data is available if it is available it will get the data and do addition if it is not available it will go and check in the register it will go and check into the register if it is available uh, the data can be given uh, take it from the register then while taking the data from the register first it is to be placed inside the reservation station and from reservation station only it can be given into the order and it can do addition then it will find out the result and again it will uh, it will be stored back updated data will be stored into this reservation station and also it will be stored into the floating point register so next time when it requires the same operand it will again look at the reservation station and from the reservation station it will take the data and it will go for uh, doing further operation so this is the procedure that happens with the tomasulo based processor here uh, two things are happening first is uh, the usage of common database for passing the result from various units to reservation station and floating point register and second thing is this reservation stations are used for storing the operands required for the various functional units and these operands are actually uh, used as uh, the purpose uh, uh, called as register renaming we'll give further explanation on this diagram in the future slides now each reservation station holds an instruction that has been issued and is awaiting execution at a functional unit so each reservation station holds instruction also not only the operands that has been issued and is awaiting execution okay <coughs> it was either the operand values okay so operand values there 
or the names of the reservation stations that will provide the operand values or it will give a temporary name or it is like a register renamed or a different name that is given for the reservation stations. Now instructions are sent from the insertion unit to the insertion queue from which they are issued in first in first out order. <coughs> then we are having a load buffer available. Now each uh, modules are described in detail. We are having a load buffer available here. We are having a load buffer here. Then we are having a store buffer here. Initially, we will give the explanation on these two. What is the function of load buffer? Load buffer has three functions. It holds the components of the effective address. It drags out outstanding loads that are waiting on the memory. All the loads that are waiting on the memory. It will track on that. It will hold the results of the completed load operations that are waiting in the common data bus. These are the duties of load buffers present in the Tomasulo processor. Now when it comes to store buffers, it has three functions. It holds the components of the effective address for store operation. It holds the destination memory addresses for outstanding stores that are waiting for the data to be stored. It also holds the address and value to store until the memory unit is available. The store is actually used for storing the content into the memory unit. It holds the address and value that is to be stored into the memory unit. All the results from either the floating point units or load units are put into the common database. So which is a common database which is connected to all the uh, units uh, which goes to the floating point register file as well as to the reservation stations and to the store buffer that I have already explained in our previous diagram. Now there are three steps in this Tomasulo based processor. This can be uh, take an arbitrary number of clock cycle. I am not uh, stricting on the number of clock cycles required for each of these stages. First stage is issue, execute, then write result. These are the st three major stages of the Tomasulo based processor. In the issue stage, what are the different things that happens? It will get the next instruction from the head of the instruction queue from where uh, we are taking the insertion. It will be taken from the insertion register. Then if there is a matching reservation station, if that insertion is already available within the reservation station and if that is empty, issue the insertion to the station. If the same insertion is not available, issue that insertion to the reservation station with the operand values if they are currently in the register. So if it is not available within the reservation station, Take the operand from the register and store it in the reservation station. And if there is no empty reservation station, means all the cells in the reservation stations are busy, means there is a structural hazard, means now the memory is full, we cannot utilize the entire reservation station. So there is a structural hazard. If the operands are not in the registers, Keep track of the functional units that will produce the results. If it is not available uh, in the register, it is to wait until the results are being produced then uh, uh, the results are available from the register to the reservation station. And this step renames registers eliminating WAR and WAW hazards. That is for uh, renaming, for uh, avoiding the conflict on the result produced and that, that is stored into the same register names. We can call it as register renaming. Now next step is execute. In the execute the first stage is if one of one or more of the operands is not at available just look at the common database. wait for the result that is received through the common data bus. 
when an operand becomes available it is placed into any reservation station awaiting it so some instructions within the reservation state station is waiting for a particular operand if if that is currently available uh, place it into the corresponding reservation station when all the operands are available the operations can be executed operation can be executed at the corresponding functional unit if if two operands are required and if two operands are available you can directly communicate with the uh, functional unit through the reservation station by delaying instruction execution until the operands are available raw hazards are avoided so these are the different steps happens during the execute stage of the tomasulo based processor now for the load and store it requires two a two step execution process for load and store a first step is to compute the effective address as we know then it is stored into load or store buffer then they are maintained by the uh, load and stores are maintained by the program order through the effective address calculation which will help to prevent prevent hazards through the memory this is the normal uh, procedure happens with the load and store operation then the third stage is write result when the results are available the result is given to the cdb common database it will be writing the, from the functional unit the results are written into the common database from there it will go to the registers and to the reservation stations waiting for that particular result if it is a store operation stores are buffered in the store buffer until both the values to be stored and the store addresses are available and the result is written as soon as the memory unit is free so there are three stages issue execute and write result within the tomasulo based processor so we need to look into the tomasulo based processor architecture from insertion queue instructions are arriving then it is given to the corresponding uh, unit like if it is a load or store operation it will go to the load store buffer through which it will it will be connected to the memory unit and from the memory unit if there are some results to be given it will be connected to the common database uh, reverse back to the uh, load store buffer as well as to the uh, reservation station and the register file then if it is any floating point operation uh, the uh, instructions are stored into the reservation station and if some operands are required it will collect the data from the uh, um, register and based on the values the uh, uh, calculations being done and finally if the results produce using this functional unit it will be written into the common database and through the common database the results are transferred back to the reservation stations that it is uh, if anybody is expecting or it will be moving back to the register file it is uh, with all the uh, for all the functional units so for all these it passes through three stages one is the issue stage second one is the execute stage and third one is the write result stage now let us see some more description on the reservation station now each reservation station has seven different fields so we are not giving more details on that but just look at what are the different uh, contents of a reservation station one is the operation mentioned as op the operation to perform on operands s1 and s2 source operands s1 and s2 then we are having q j q k the reservation stations that will produce the corresponding source operand a value of zero indicates that source operand is already available in vj or vk or is unnecessary that will produce the corresponding source operand q j q k the value of source operand now vj vk the value of source operands
only one of the V fields or the Q field is valid for each operand. So uh, this is the reservation station values. This is the source operand values. For loads, the VK field is used to hold the offset field. Now another uh, component is A, which is used to hold information for the memory address calculation for a load or store. Then we are having a BC indicates that this reservation station and its uh, the function units are already occupied. Just for that indication, we are using the BC uh, component present in the reservation station. Then we are having one more uh, field that is uh, called as now. This is a field taken from the register file that is QI uh, that consists of the number of reservation stations that contains the operation whose result should be stored into the register. If the value of QI is blank or zero, no currently active instruction is computing a result designated destined, destined for this particular register. The load and store buffers each have a field A which holds the result of the effective address that I have already mentioned. Now a load and store can safely be done out of order provided they access different addresses. Now in the case of load and store operation if both access different memory addresses they are actually independent operations so that is why they can be executed in different or out of order order because one is not affecting the other memory address. If a store and a load access the same address then what we can do first point is the load is uh, uh, then either if uh, they are accessing the same address then either uh, the load is before the store in the program order and interchanging them results in a WAR hazard so it may produce a hazard and if the store is before the load and interchanging them results in a read after write hazard if they are depending each other if they are accessing the same memory address there may be some possibilities of uh, war hazard and raw hazard similarly interchanging two stores to the same address results in a write after write hazard also so for load store operation also uh, there is a possibility of having uh, these types of hazards when we access the same address for uh, the uh, uh, store and load operations now to determine if a load can be executed at a given time the processor can check whether any uncompleted store that precedes the load in program order shares the same data memory address as the load so these are the explanation regarding the previous um, load and store operations uh, and similarly a store must also wait until there are no unexpected loads or stores that are earlier in the program order so we have to be very consider uh, we have to consider the order of the execution of load and store operation that deals with the same address so we have to be very careful on executing these type of load and store operation so for detecting such hazard the processor must have computed the data memory address associated with any earlier memory operation so we should have the memory details so that we can identify the uh, reference to the same memory and we can identify the hazard so in order to guarantee this the effective address calculations is to be performed in the program order itself so that we can identify whether there is any clash between the memory address available now in the Thomas Sulo scheme there are uh, two techniques that are combined that is first thing is uh, the renaming of the registers to a larger set of registers this is addi an additional hardware requirements we should have more number of registers present within the system also buffering of source operands from the register file buffering of source operands from the register file with the support of reservation stations so these two techniques are combined together to form the Thomas Willow uh, processor approach the source operand buffering re resolves uh, war hazards that arise when 
the operand is available in the register so uh, uh, we were discussing about dynamic scheduling the use of dynamic scheduling the situation when we need to go for dynamic scheduling the basic difference between static scheduling and dynamic scheduling then uh, uh, the out of order execution normal order normal pipeline order uh, the situation when we need to reorder the execution when we reorder the execution what are the different problems like different hazards like raw hazards war hazards wa hazards etc and in order to solve these problems we are uh, having a technique uh, or approach based on tomasulo approach and there is a processor that is created based on tomasulo's approach which is called as tomasulo based processor which uses the support of uh, reservation stations uh, to store the instructions and operands required for different functional units and we can rename the register with the support of reservation stations second it uses a common database so that the results can be deposited to the reservation stations if it is required or it can be stored back to the register file for the final storage of result so in order to avoid these hazards we can get the support of tomasulo based processor and with this uh, tomasulo based processor uh, with the several components available we can do all the uh, instruction uh, execution uh, based on the reservation stations registers common database other uh, functional units and memory units we can perform the execution of different instructions uh, in normal order and if it is an issue uh, if there is an issue we can reorder uh, that is an out of order execution can also be possible but if we use the maslow based approach this out of order execution can be done in a better way so uh, this is one of the major uh, technique used for dynamic uh, uh, scheduling or what you say the approach used for uh, increasing the instruction level parallelism earlier we were discussing about static uh, scheduling uh, that means compiler based mechanisms now this is about a hardware based mechanism where we are changing the processor architecture itself to increase the instruction level parallelism that's it for now we will see more mechanism based on hardware for improving the performance of instruction level parallelism in the next session that's it for now thank you